All right, we got Dave Comstock here with us. Dave currently is with Tripwire. Uh, and if, when you, if, if you want, I think it's very, very entertaining. Go read uh, Dave's bio. In, now, in particular, what I like is uh, he, he, actually, he actually mentions the fact he's going to admit to it that he had an IBM XT. That's kind of a little going back there. But what I really liked about it was he actually, he actually talked about abusing his equipment. Now, this is the same guy who's going to talk to us right now about social engineering, right? Okay, so I think I think he's speaking from experience then, right? All right, <laughs> there, Dave. I'll use. Okay, thanks. All right, so let me ask her. So thanks for coming. Um, today we're going to talk about social engineering. Um, let's just take a real quick minute. Thanks to staff for this great event so far. I've had a lot of good talks. Uh, Block picking village was cool. I don't know if any of you guys went to that. You can find me on steno.ghost.io. And that's lead speak, so it's a zero. Um, I also am on Twitter and Mastodon, the same exact thing. So this presentation is going to be, I did a lot of studying of recent interesting attacks that I had seen in social engineering, going from the DEF CON, you know, social engineering capture the flags, and just general posts from popular media, Twitter posts, stuff like that. And I wanted to find a framework for social engineering, because I'm a nerd, I like frameworks. I mean, it's just, it's just one of those things that they're nice, you know. They they help you streamline things, and social engineering is very relative. It's it's very it's very hard to plan. It's, it's not you can't just have like a set in stone way of doing things. So, you know, another good thing about it is I don't like following microwavable food instruction guides. You know, there's not like a oh do this, abuse this bias, and all of a sudden you'll be you know the, the most bad guy on the planet. Eh, not really. So, script all the things right. And I tried coming up with this uh, little acronym for it, and everyone loves acronym, acronyms. So we're going to streamline phishing, phishing and physical, getting physical access, or so PVP. And then we're going to do it by attacking ICP, not the clowns. Right? No clown hate here. Okay. So set up PVP by attacking ICP. What the heck is ICP? That's the bottom segment there. And these are the, the three general areas that I've found that most social engineers attacks that seem to be effective take advantage of. So the first one is identity. And the identity comes down to you want to assume their role as much as possible. So if you're going to pretend to be you know, a construction worker, you're going to have worn clothes. You're not going to have new clothes, obviously. You're going to have you know, tools. You're going to have certain tools. You're going to have calloused hands, maybe. There's going to be all kinds of, of weird little details that you need to pay attention to. You're going to have certain logos and insignias. So if you work for a certain company, you're going to have a certain logo on your, ja on your jacket, so stuff like that. Method acting. And this is uh, Stanislavski. He was, uh, he was an actor from back in the day, and he made this, this custom thing, and he said, you know, one of the best things to do is just people watch. So you, you just go out, watch people, pay attention to the minute details of the situation, and you can kind of use that to build your character. So culture, jargon, standard operating procedure. If you're going to be trying to fish someone, you're going to want to focus on call handle times. If you're going to be trying to trick a tech support agent, they're going to have redispatch rates. So Dell, for instance, I, I work with Dell a lot. And one of the ways I've gotten their customer service reps to stop giving me crap when I want something done is I say, oh, I've done all of this. I, I give them all of the, the information they ask. I said, oh, all of the revisions are you know, the newest. All the firmwares are great, blah, blah, blah. Because one of the new things they have is an RDR, read dispatch rate. And if they have to send the tech out a second time, the person on the phone gets a negative mark for that. So of course, that's going to be one of the main things. And then again, psychology, cognitive biases and just out of curiosity, how many of you guys like Mr. Rogers? A couple of you? OK. Have you ever seen this quote before? Always look for the helpers? OK. Well, that's a great quote, but not quite for the reason you might first expect. And I really like the satanic Mr. Rogers in the corners. Those, those were, were pretty, pretty prime. So and, you know, even Charles Henderson here, he says, you know, from IBM Extra Fred, he says, People are primed to help. We want to help. And that's even corporate, uh, corporate policy sometimes. It's driven into them from almost every angle. So the most, and there was actually a cool article, and I'm going to bring it up a little later, but the title of it was, A Hacker's Best Friend is a Helpful Employee. And that's almost always true. So we're going to start real simple here. And this is a popular social media post from a little while back, just back in December. And it deals with wearing a high-vis vest to get into just free events, concerts, 
you know, backstage, stuff like that. Nothing intense, but you know, what it really relies on is two things. There's a psychologist called Ralph Linton, and he has different statuses, ascribed versus achieved. So ascribed status says, well, I'm sitting here with my cute little speaker badge, and that makes me a speaker. That makes me an expert of some kind. I submitted to the CFP. I got accepted. Obviously, I have an idea of what I'm talking about. Eh, maybe not. But that's the ascribed status. Now, the achieved status is what I achieved. If after you sit here, listen to my talk, and think, hey, that kid sounded what he knows what he's talking about, maybe I'll do good. And it also uses authority bias. And this is pretty common. You guys probably already know it. And it's, what happens is you automatically trust or respect authority figures. So if you're going to a concert event, you see a guy wearing a security vest, you, you instantly think that guy's security. You're not really going to think, well, let's check. Let's make sure. Let's call his manager, right? It's not going to happen. And this one was a presentation by a Sophos employee from IP Expo 2016. And basically what he did was he just took a ladder around. He took a ladder, tried to look like a maintenance worker, and they, he got led into so many places he was all actually surprised. And again, this is a really, really simple example. So imagine adding a little bit more complexity to that situation, and you're going to get it in a lot more places. So now again, back when I started here, I like frameworks. And I like frameworks because they're modular. They're not microwave food sets, right? So how many of you guys play Legos? Mm, good amount of you. So I came up with this TNT. And so the acronym goes PDP by attacking ICP with TNT. Okay? And the TNT, I cheated a little bit, and instead of an A, types and tactics, right? So I'm not going to read the slides off to you, but there's five general types I came across. And the first one is support staff. This one's pretty broad. This can be IT, painters, construction workers, cleaning staff, you know, any kind of support work at all. And then there's four different sort of subgroups that could fall under support, but they're really their own kind of thing. And then I also want to go over a couple of different tactics. So abusing self-interest, using tools, paperwork, things like that, um, using OSINT, open source information, cliches and banner to kind of guide the conversation and maybe misdirect them if they're not trusting you, things like that, and abusing cognitive biases, obviously. So the first part is abusing self-interest. And as you can see from Dale Carnegie up there, he says, you can make a lot more friends by being interested in others than trying to get them interested in you. So it's just one of those things where it's a pretty universal thing. And there's a quote from a, a book called Lake Wobegon where it says, welcome to Lake Wobegon, where all the women are strong, all the men are good looking, and all the children are above average. And that kind of describes how most people view themselves. You're never the, the outlier. You're never the below average. right? You're always at least a little bit above. So tools and paperwork. And this is going to be, you know, you can do OSINT, obviously. But if you see the badge there, if you go on LinkedIn, there's a lion tag, LinkedIn Open Networking. And people will literally just follow you back. They'll openly let you into the network. They don't care. And then people will post employee badges. On, they'll say, oh, I finally got my dream job. I'm so happy. And they'll take a picture of their employee badge. OK, that probably shouldn't be on the internet, guys. I just want to say that. So again, tools. And you know, they should show wear and tear again. And again, the general idea is that you want to disarm people. You want to get them looking at you and saying, that guy looks like a carpenter. He doesn't look like an IT guy. right? Because that's not what you're going for. And I get, one of the things you want to do when you're picking an identity is you want to pick an identity that will allow you to potentially conceal your gear better. So one of the ways to do that would be Googling. And you can just Google for a company, find their logo, and call up a print shop, get business cards, get shirts. <laughs> Just say you're with the company. How many of those places are actually going to call the company and verify you work there? Probably not many. If they ask, just say, oh, well, I'm just emailing you from a personal account because my current one got hacked. You know how that goes, right? Most people will probably just go, eh, that makes sense. So you know, construction workers here, you can see they're dirty. They are literally knee deep in concrete. They're obviously going to have Tools, their tools are all going to be worn, blah, 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 blah. And this was an outfit I use. And one of my favorites is IT Guy, because I'm an IT guy, so it's very easy for me. And this, again, Lenovo shirt, Lenovo laptop, Kali Linux USB, and just general business casual clothing. Now, these are pretty cool. If you haven't been around on Twitter too much, Twitter is pretty cool. And this left image here is some guy who literally turned his dog into a walking Wi-Fi pineapple. 
I mean, seriously, talk about disguising your tools, right, guys? Turning your dog into a walking attack vector. That's pretty cool. There was a similar one with a cat, too. I forget the exact, well, I think it was for Wi-Fi networks or something. Yeah. There's a Wi-Fi yeah. network protocol. Yep. yep. And if you look on the right there, uh, Jack Hyde and Tinker have this thing called Hacker Adventures on Twitter. And it's really cool. If you don't follow them, go check it out. But you, know, you can see there, she has cameras hidden in the sides of her glasses. And she says, hey, do I look trustworthy? Yeah, I mean, they, they look a little thick, but it's a style thing, you know, whatever. And then again, you know, we can see here on the left here, some guy took a Raspberry Pi running Kali Linux and shoved it into a power adapter. So he can take this with him, make it look like the power adapter to his computer, use it to hook into another computer or a network or whatever, and run Kali. And then on the right side, if you guys follow Mubix, he's a really cool guy. A couple of people have mentioned him today, actually. And my company actually does this every once in a while. We do this for like, uh, like menu boards and signage and stupid stuff like that. But really, computers are getting so small now, you can stick them in the back of a TV. If you can get physical access, you know, even anywhere, just to their cafeteria. The cafeteria is probably publicly open, you know? Literally, 3D dongle, Kali Linux, plug it into a TV, there you go. So open source information. Again, the general idea is you want to look for the corporate information. So you want to look at the culture. You want to look at the structure. This is where the OSINT comes into play. You might want to look at the corporate blog. You might want to check out glassdoor.com. But Glassdoor, you're going to have to take with a grain of salt because you know, when you go to Glassdoor and you just came away from a bad company, what are you going to write about them? Not positive things. If you feel slighted by your prior company, what are you going to write about them? Not positive things. So not always 100% true. Try to correlate it. Try to build some baselines. Figure it out that way. And then the second part there, VIP information. Again, check out the corporate Facebook. Check out the blogs. Check out their social media profiles. These guys might say, oh, going on vacation in two weeks. OK, cool. Well, between that and Glassdoor, I just figured out that you're a bit impatient. So when I go in there, I'm going to say, oh, hi, I'm Dave, the IT guy. I'm here to change the, the you know, jack out in the wall because his internet isn't working well. You know how he is. You know how he gets. He's very impatient. He's out of the office. It's a good time to do it. You, know, you don't want to call him in the middle of his vacation, have to bother him, et cetera, et cetera. You can keep massaging these things in. And then all of a sudden, you build it up, and they just kind of go with it a little bit. And industry forums, subreddits, things like that. You can just do general information gathering to get the jargon. So for instance, um, I, did a, I did a little experiment where I went out to an air, uh, airport and pretended I was a pilot. And one of the things for pilots is squawking. And it's a way of transmitting certain things that are happening. So for instance, here's a list of all the squawks. And if you're going to be a North American squawk at the bottom there, you can see 1200 is the standard VFR flight, flight, flight code. So if you're a pilot in anywhere in North America, Canada, Mexico, wherever, that is the code you use all the time. You're going to have to know that. If you don't know that, you're going to be shown as a fake almost instantly. So cliches and banter. And again, this is the idea is to drive the conversation away from the things that they might not necessarily trust about you and push it off onto them. So banner, stories, excuses, misdirection. Focus these and make them all about, let's say, oh, I got a new employee, my scheduler. He's not a, he doesn't, he might not work out. You know, if you, if you go to the place and say, oh, you're not actually scheduled to be coming in for, you know, re repairing the stuff today. Just say, oh, did he not call you? That's the third time this week. And then you can say, you know, he's a new guy. I feel like he's going to work out, but you know, he just needs to step it up. And a lot of people will just come back with you and try to relate to you and tell you their own story and say, oh, I know exactly how that is. I have this one guy, I swear, I wish I could fire him, but I just can't. And they'll just kind of keep going with that, and you can just keep rolling with it and move it out from there. So different frames to use. Again, corporate policy. Sometimes corporate policy is just silly. And you can say, well, well that's the policy. I don't like it. I don't understand it, but that's the way it is. Social norms. Being a new parent. Being the fan of a disappointed sports team. right? Those things can all help explain away things that might not necessarily be going well for you. Again, overbearing boss, poor coworker, or just being simply too busy. You know, I'll, I meant to call you, but yesterday was just so awful. Tell them this, you know, real nice short story about some client you had that was, you know, really bad to you. Stuff like that. Build empathy. You know, stuff like that. So cognitive biases. 
this is going to be cool because the idea here is that you want to take these biases and you want to chain them together. So the first one there, well, the first one that we're going to talk about actually is anchoring. And this is that people usually tend to rely too heavily on the very first piece of information they get about you. So your very first piece of information is likely your, how you look. Right? I mean, that's the assuming the identity portion, right? That's the picking the tools. That's the making sure your tools are worn. That's the making sure your shoes are bent, they're dirty, they have paint splatters on them, stuff like that. So you start off there, and then from there you say, okay, well, I'm from X company, here for Y problem at the request of this person. And you can use real people from your open source information, right? You can say, okay, well, this boss told me to come in. I'm from this company. I have the logo on my shirt. It's not a real shirt. I printed a fake employee badge. You don't know what the heck the badge looks like, right? Right in. The next um, one to kind of talk about here is ambiguity. And so you want to avoid this one by giving them too much information. So ambiguity up there, if you look at it, it says you want to avoid options where missing info makes chances unknown. So if you don't know much about me, you don't really have a good baseline of me. And that was actually one of the things I really liked about the conference so far. Um, Dave Kennedy mentioned it. Um, Nuri Yasha, I think, mentioned it for his Threat Intel one. And it said that you know, the basic idea is to take baselines. And that's really, you know, even just general defense of your network. Find what your network usually does, find the outlier, and then investigate the outlier. Find baselines. So by giving them just stupid information, again, just the banter, the social norms, just stupid stuff. Oh, my boss is an idiot. Giving them that little bit of information tends to help them think, OK, well, now I know him. Now I have a baseline for him, right? It's not just some random person who says, oh, he works for this company. He sounds like an IT guy. He looks like an IT guy. He's really going through it. And Arthur Aaron is uh, a psychologist. And he mentioned this study he had where he said that mutual vulnerability fosters closeness. And really what it, it talks about is it really just describes the natural process for friendship. You know, once I open up to you, you open up to me, and then we kind of snowball that. And as it gets heavier and you know, a bigger snowball, you eventually will have a really, think you'll have a really good grasp of who I am, right? And again, that's the baseline thing. So after that, you want to chain this into the authority and ascribe status stuff, right? So if all of a sudden you're showing up, you're talking to them, you're, be, you're you know, doing banter, and if you've listened to some of the, the social engineering CTFs, banter and small talk is huge. I mean, that's, that's really where they spend probably, what, 40% of the conversation? That's, that's the in-between parts. It's the, it's the fill-ins. It's the, the avoiding the ambiguity. The next part is the zero risk one. And this one is... It can be used to get you out of a situation. So let's say, oh, geez, wrong button. So let's say that you're going in to this place, and the very first thing you get in there, you realize that you don't have an ID, and the security guard checks IDs. Well, you can say, hey, look, you know, I, I have a young son at home. He wanted to see what I looked like, so he was playing with it. He lost it. I haven't found it yet. It just happened this morning. Here's my employee badge fake or real, who knows, is that good enough? And for a lot of people, that might be. That could get you in pretty easily. And again, it's that zero risk. It actually uses that, that bias, and it says they prefer small risks over a larger risk with a larger reduction. So you want to make it seem there's a problem. There's another thing called the hairy arm technique, or talking to the rubber duck, where you say, you know, there was a photographer who figured out that when you put a certain frame in a photo of like a little bit of his hairy arm, very picky clients would say, hey, get rid of that, and then it's good. There were certain clients he had that always had to find something wrong. So by giving them just a little bit of something at the beginning, it automatically focuses them on that. It's almost like shark bait, in a sense. You know, they'll go, oh, OK, sure. That doesn't look right. Let's investigate that. Oh, OK. And then you already have this plan in place to be able to say, oh, well, no. Look, I'm dressed like it. Oh, yeah, I don't have my, I, my real legal ID, but here's my badge. Here's my business card. Go to my website, create a fake website, you know, stuff like that. So just to go over a couple of these, these two pictures here, I'm the computer man. If you Google computer man, you will find these two videos. The left one here is just a small business guy, and they're all going through dancing. It was really cool. 
And the right one, you can see the cool Tron graphics there, right? So these Tron graphics, this is from some 80s children's Canadian show or something. And the guy does some really tight robot moves too. Like, check them out. What's up? That, I, exactly. And so, again, going back to DEF CON, Chris Silvers from DEF CON 24, he used this idea where he said, okay, I'm going to send someone a gift card for a very real thing that their company did. He found through, through OSINT that they were doing this gift card thing. And he said, okay, I'm going to send them a link. The link isn't going to work. And then when the link, link doesn't work, I'm going to offer to remote in and help assist, assist that person, right? And again, appealing to their interest, abusing self-interest, hey, you want a gift card. Who doesn't want a free gift card? Free money. I mean, even if you don't want to spend it at that place, you can, you know, hawk it for you know, 50, 60% of the price maybe. So, you know. And then, mm, we'll go to the next one here. So, auditors and new employees. There was a DEF CON 20 CTF, and the guy's name was Shane. And what he did was, he pretended to be a government contractor, a new government contractor from Walmart. And he was working on this, this big project that was super secret. And he, he called up a, the target in front of everyone at DEF CON, obviously, and said, you know, hey, um, I'm here. I'm going to, you know, we're profiling your store. We want to just get some information about it to see if you'd be po possible for you to go in this program with us. And, you know, you'd be like the flagship store. You'd be like the guinea pig in a sense. And it gets people excited, obviously, you know. So they're going to say, you know, okay. And he ended up going through and talking to them and just going through the, gen the general banter with them, and they, he ended up getting all the flags at once. He got their suppliers, he got their vendors, he got you know, the information about their, their computer systems. He got all kinds of stupid stuff out of it just from pretending that he was some auditor. And again, you, know, you can say, you can do some OSINT, and you can say, okay, well, I'm calling you on behalf of this real manager from your company, who's a very big deal, and I'm also from a reputable auditing company. So that way, you, know, you might not be, obviously, but if you build that up, you can say, oh, hey, you know, no, really, I, I am. And that's, that's basically what he did. And again, Tinker, the Hacker Adventures, there was another one where he did an internal audit. And companies will oftentimes have surprise audits, especially in the food industry. Sometimes health, they're not usually surprising health, but whatever. So he said, you know, he showed up out of the blue randomly, just knowing the company name, just knowing the boss name, and said, okay, hi, I'm here to do a surprise audit. Show me around. And the manager, all right, just like that, went along with it. Now, vendor reps. I don't know why anyone would want to be one, let alone to pretend to be one, but it's definitely some way that you could get in. So if you're thinking about what a vendor rep does, they bring free stuff. The free stuff always has the company logo on it. So if you're looking for the company logo, look up like EPS files vector files, things like that, and then take them to a local print shop, a buddy, you know, whatever, however you're gonna do it, and print out stuff with that. If you're not using buzzwords, then you don't sound like a vendor rep. No synergy, it's no synergy. No horizontal or vertical integration. Next gen, AI or cloud, right? I mean, you guys gotta throw these, you gotta pepper those in there if you're gonna pretending to be a vendor rep. And so it looks like we're just about out of time here. Um, Questions, comments?